And we're back with a second guest, Tad Jones with the Will Rogers Museum has now joined us. Tad, welcome to the discussion. Thank you, Sam. Great to be here. Now, the reason we got you both on, so the folks at home will understand a little more, beginning, I think, in July, the Will Rogers Museum comes under the umbrella of the State Historical Society. Is that not true? Well, I would say it's we're going to have a, a collaborative effort. We're coming together is really what we're doing because the assets here, the staff, the community support, and the story of Will Rogers is incomparable. We don't have anything else like mm -hmm. that in the entire state. So in my opinion, it's not as if there's an umbrella or, but it, it's emerging of our resources mm -hmm. to use our resources more efficiently to spread the legacy of Will Rogers around the world even more effectively. Sounds to me like a perfect marriage, Tad. Am I right on this? Yeah, it really is. And you know, this discussion has been around for a long time, um, almost 20 years. Matter of fact, my very first bill I debated in the Oklahoma legislature was to not merge the Will Rogers Memorial with the J.M. Davis. And that passed, and by one vote, I lost by one vote, but a year later that was repealed unanimously. And the reason that didn't work out is neither side really wanted it. In this case, our commission voted unanimously in support of it. The family uh, is supportive of this. The board at the Historical Society is supportive of this. And we both had the exact same mission. So uh, I think this is going to be a very happy marriage, and we're looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you, one of the most emo emotional experiences in my lifetime came the day I was allowed access to the crypt underneath the main building. And there is the crypt for Will and right next to him, Betty. I could not help myself. I had to put my hand on the surface of the marble because knowing full good and well, that's as close as I'd ever be to the man. And I will never forget the feeling. It was almost electrical for me to be that close to that individual in my lifetime, I, 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 it just took my breath away. And we have some video we want to share with you folks at home, that uh, video from uh, the Will Rogers Museum. And uh, we'll go ahead and roll that. And Tad, you can kind of talk us through what we're seeing. Well, and to your point of going in the, in the tomb, you know, that used to never happen. And we started allowing that to happen a little bit. And at our spring break here recently, uh, we had a behind the scenes tour and, and the highlight of that tour at the very end of it is to let people go down the tomb just one day a year. So you're looking at some of the exhibits uh, in the memorial. That was the heritage uh, room that talks a little bit about the history of the family and of the Cherokee heritage that Will Rogers had. And that's one of our mm -hmm. great uh, music, uh, exhibits there. This is one about him on the radio. Obviously, Will was one of the top radio stars. And this is just one about uh, the different uh, types of uh, industries, I guess, that Will Rogers was top in. He was in top of vaudeville and of radio and of movies and, uh, you know, he did silent movies and then he was there for the talkies and he was the number one movie star and he was the number one newspaper writer uh, in the entire country. Everybody wanted to read that. That's one of our beautiful murals and we have a lot of events there. So um, just a wonderful museum to visit and what's amazing is almost every piece that we have was done after uh, mm -hmm. Will had passed, and Bob, you might want to talk about this. These are the dioramas that you're mm -hmm. so fond of. Uh, Sam, when I was a kid, my grandmother lived on Will Rogers Boulevard, halfway between the tracks and the hill. And of course, in the days before air conditioning, I could walk up in July and tour the memorial, and it was always cool in there mm -hmm. with the breezes, mm -hmm. even though no air conditioning it was still cool. And those dioramas took me back in time. Uh, you know, people ask me why I became a historian, written books. And uh, there are a lot of reasons, but this is one of them. That took me back in history. I, I felt like I knew Will Rogers as a kid, which is what we want to do today. You know, many years ago, uh, a good, and I mean a very good friend of mine, Charles Banks Wilson, had a studio on the second floor of a building in Miami, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And his father managed a theater there in Miami. And when he was just a boy, and just beginning to draw, if you will, and sketch and paint a little, he would lay on his back under a table in his father's theater while Will Rogers worked the boards rehearsing for a show he was going to do that night. And he said that happened not once or twice. He said it happened several times. And he said, you know, before it was all over, I finished that portrait. On, on the bottom of that underside of that table, mm -hmm. and he said, I have no idea where that table is. Mm -hmm. But somewhere there's a table 
that the artwork is by Charles Banks Wilson, and it's of Will Rogers on the stage where mm -hmm. his father managed the theater. Mm. I think our curator would like to have that, so we need to track that down. Uh -huh. it, it still exists, I'm told. Um, one of the, the interesting things to me, and you know, I, I try to take a busman's holiday every once in a while, a bus driver's holiday. I like to see other television stations. I like to see other radio stations and newspapers. At one time, we had 40 black-owned and operated newspapers in this part of Oklahoma mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. Not many people are aware of that. Then there was an influx of Indian newspapers. Over time, things changed. More and more people began to read and take an interest in what was going on, not just in their area, but in their state and the nation. The newspaper industry alone is a wealth of history. Yeah. And I'm assuming it's well represented within the historical society, is it? Well, not? ironically, it's like we scripted this, but the historical society was created by the Territory Press Association, 1893. Mm -hmm. We became a territorial agency, 1895, state agency, 1907. Today, because we started collecting newspapers so early, we have newspapers going back to 1844, total 33 million pages of newspapers. Wow. Because we collected them, started microfilming in the 50s, mm -hmm. same time National Archives started microfilming. Today we're digitizing. Within the year, someone can get online and look at the newspapers of Claremore, Tulsa, every town in the, in the entire state and go from 1923 back to the founding of the community and it's searchable. So we use newspapers as the building blocks. You reporters do the same thing we historians do. You collect information, you make some sense out of it, then you present it. You do it one day at a time, generally. We do it years or decades or centuries at a time. Mm -hmm. But we're doing the same thing. Those newspapers are the story of every community one day at a time. You mm -hmm. put enough of that together into a mosaic, you start getting a picture. Then you throw in a story like Will Rogers or Sequoia, another Cherokee genius. Uh, we operate the Sequoia home site. He's the one that developed the only original syllabary in the Western Hemisphere. And the oh, Aztecs, Incas I'm didn't do that. Not to jump in and start singing your praises, but go <laughs> ahead. But this was a genius, in many ways similar to Will Rogers, using communication as a tool to serve the community. Mm -hmm. Sequoia did it by allowing uh, Indian people, Cherokees who could not speak English, a way to communicate, to adapt, to make these changes. Will Rogers used his language and his metaphors and his, his, his knowledge to pull us together. Today we see it more than ever, the politics of division and hate and fear. Will Rogers was the exact opposite. We've got to come together. Yes, we may have two p big parties. We may have different opinions, but we've got to come together better start to solve our, arms. our problems. We better. To add one more thing I want to get in, and I, I, I've got to mention the rubbing the toe of Will Rogers. Uh, the statue that we have in the museum here. There you can see how those toes have been rubbed. People come in and just do it. Mm -hmm. There's also a statue in Washington that shows the same effect, much the same as Abe Lincoln's toes. People come in and for some reason they just want to touch. Mm -hmm. They just want to be a part, which brings me to this question. We have probably a minute. If there are folks out there watching right now who hear us talking and they want to become a volunteer, either with the Historical Society or with the Will Rogers Museum, what do they do? How do they get involved? Well, we have a great group of ropers and we had so many events that we did last year and we just cannot do the projects that we want to do without our volunteer corps. Uh, they're called the Ropers. They do extensive training on Will Rogers. And you can just go to our website, willrogers.com, willrogers.com, and you can get the information there on how to become one of our Ropers. And it's a fun thing. Uh, will Rogers is a fun guy to work mm -hmm. for, and we will keep you busy, that's for sure, as a volunteer. No doubt. And for us, I would recommend that people start by joining the Oklahoma Historical Society. We have about 9,000 members around the country and around the world, really. But you can join, you get our publications, you find out what we're doing, volunteer. To me, I look at a volunteer as someone willing to serve, but also willing to give us their time to come to a program, to, to be active in this conversation using history to learn. Bob, thank you, and thanks to you, Tad, and thank you so much for the job you've done and the job you're doing. We are so grateful. Also today, we want to thank the members of our very first studio audience that came in, a small one, 
but they're energetic and enthusiastic nonetheless, and we are tickled to death to have them, and there'll be more of that down the road. That's all the time we have for this edition of Green Country Perspectives. I'm Sam Jones. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.